I'm Yasi Salik, and I'm the host of Bandsplain, a show where we explain cult bands and iconic artists by going deep into their histories and discographies. We're back with a brand new season at our brand new home, the Ringer Podcast Network, tackling a whole new batch of artists, from grunge gods to power pop pioneers to new metal legends, and many, many more. Listen to new episodes every Thursday, only on Spotify. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other... Well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. Welcome to Bachelor Party. At long last, me and Callie are here to discuss the Love is Blind finale wedding episode and the absolute travesty that was the live reunion. Callie, I don't even know where to begin. Like, what what are you just dying to get off your chest? Well, first of all, I would like to say, just so everyone knows, we were supposed to record on Sunday. This was supposed to come out Sunday night, I think. Sunday night. I don't don't know how quickly we were going to edit it, but yeah. Sunday night. I just want to point that out. Netflix completely they screwed us up. Fucked up like, our schedule. Listen, completely. Sometimes you have to prioritize the NBA playoffs, and sometimes <laughs> you have to prioritize not staring at a hold screen for another hundred minutes. So here we are. We're really sorry. A, a hold screen with insane hold music. The hold music were, was horrible. When I was in college, me. we used to get Jimmy John's because it's delicious. And the hold, the hold music on the Jimmy John's phone number was awful. It was like a very fast pitched voice talking about Jimmy John's. It's the only thing that's worse than the Netflix hold music. <laughs> I've never heard hold Jimmy John's music. Also, do they have Jimmy John's in New York? I, very, I tried very to find few. that the other day. I, I wish they some... had more. Actually, there's one near you, though, I think. I was craving it the other Pop day. Pop and Jimmy John's are two things that I used to have all the time in college that I wish I had more. Pop Belly's awesome. I feel like there's a I feel like there's a pot belly by me. Yes, there is. It's one of the few. Okay. It's really, really okay. good. I love it. Anyway, so you're supposed to do, <laughs> we're supposed to do it on Sunday, whatever. I got a lot of messages from friends this morning, Tuesday morning, being like, finally caught up on Love is Blind. So we're not alone. What's your headline? coming out of the reunion. I mean, by far in a way, it's that Vanessa Lachey can no longer host not only reunions, but any show ever again. There was a lot of things about Vanessa's performance that bothered me. But I was, and I'm hesitant to use this, these two words, but I was triggered by her intense emphasis on these couples having babies. babies. And... I was like, this is actually toxic. Triggered and toxic. Two words I avoid because they are overused. But I really feel they apply in this situation. Like, let them live. Also, maybe letting them live means they decide they don't want to have kids. They decide they want to adopt. They want to wait a long time. Like, who knows? Or they're going to do it tomorrow. It's none of your business. None of our business. Like, don't pressure them. It, it was it was really made me angry. It's also just weird. We're in 2023. That's not exactly. Like, it was real. Like to me, I'm just like, doesn't she know? That's not really a question people ask anymore. Um, also, I was thinking to myself, like these couples aren't 21, right? No. So like this is Tiffany's 37. You know, She's my age. And Chelsea's 33. Yeah. Like a lot of reality shows, they, they, the couples are like bachelor. They're 24 year olds, whatever. Yeah, I'm like, maybe it's not as sensitive as a thing to ask a 24-year-old. You're asking 30-year-old plus, 35-year-old plus women when they're having kids. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. It's like a really... It's a massive You don't know if they, do. if they can have kids. You don't know if they want kids. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know if they lost... Yeah. Maybe they had a miscarriage. Maybe yeah. they had something. Like, who knows? Like, 
It's a really good point. It's I think I think that's one of the reasons I found it so offensive is because also Chelsea said, which I thought this was a great answer, and we'll talk a lot more about her, but Chelsea said to Vanessa that the great like one of the greatest gifts that Kwame has given her is that he he has made it so that she has stopped her like hearing like the proverbial biological clock tick and she's just like mm-hmm. enjoying herself. And like yeah. that's so lovely. I'm so happy for Chelsea. That's great. And Vanessa, like, that's why you don't ask that question because she was feeling pressure and now she's not. And like, don't make her go back to that place. It was, it was really, really offensive. It was strange. And you know what was more strange? Having villain numero uno come on the screen with his baby that we just found out about two seconds ago that isn't from a pair from Love is Blind, just a random girl that he didn't even know was pregnant. She didn't know either for a while. To be like, hey, look what can happen. It's like, that has literally nothing to do with Love is Blind. No one likes this guy. Who is this baby? It was so weird. It was so weird. Uh, What? I think Bartiz wanted to announce it that way because he... Over the weekend, it was past weekend, I think, he, it came out, he posted a picture of him and his son, which is like, okay, fine. And now that I see that he announced it, like this like pre-tape video saying his name at the reunion, I'm just like, oh, so you were waiting to make this formal announcement? I don't know. It's really, it's really messed up. Let's not even talk about Bartiz. It was all strange. It was all strange. Leave, leave him behind. Other headlines other than the Netflix disaster, which is, we can talk about in the future. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I, I completely forgot about what a disaster that was. The, the <laughs> Vanessa of it all, I, I told you before we started, like, I could go on, I could, the entire podcast could be about things that annoyed me about her performance. And I'm sure as we go on, it's, we're going to continually bring it up because it just, there was just it so was many rough. instances where I was like, what is happening? Yeah, bring her, bring her colleague, Lindsay Jones, who she's on um, a lot of our football coverage and she's a football editor. She made the good point, which is like, on top of the like emphasis on babies, the sort of like aligning with Jackie and Josh and sort of picking on Marshall and then picking on Paul was just like, was just really weird. I I feel like she was trying to be like a friend to the women in a way, which like led some of these choices. But it was like, just like, it was very tone deaf. Not to Irina. That's true. That's really true. All right. We, there's so much to dig into. Like, can we start with Micah and Paul? Because that's sort of... I, I, sure. I want to get into let's, that. Let's dive in. <laughs> First of all, did you are you aware that allegedly Vanessa sent Paul flowers the next morning to apologize for the way that she treated him? No. There's literally no way that Vanessa is the one who sent, sent those. Like, even if she, like... Let's say that she, like, a friend's, like, parent died. She wanted to send her friends flowers, like, condolences. I'm sure, like, an assistant did it. So... I'm sure someone just sent Paul flowers and like signed it, Vanessa. I mean, I don't know that for sure, but that's my my strong assumption. Yeah. And similar to this baby conversation, the thing that Vanessa really wanted to dig into with Paul and Micah was Paul saying Micah um, didn't seem maternal and didn't have like the motherly qualities. And it's like, yeah, that was a really fucking savage thing to say. I agree. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, 100%. It was really... I would be devastated if someone said that about me. Even if I didn't want to have kids, I would still be like, do you need to say that in your interview immediately after you decline to yeah. marry me? That's like really fucked up. I feel like it is one of the worst insults you could give a woman, again, whether you want kids or not. Yeah. Um, it's just really offensive. Yeah. But I think you talk to him about it and you move on. She asked him... 17 different times. Yeah. How did he land at this conclusion? Which also, if I was Mike, I'd be like, can we please move on? I know. I don't need to continually hear how he thinks. I, she, he was like, it's just a feeling, you know? There's just... And it, it just like kept going where I'm like, does Vanessa also realize that you're making him continually bash her? Because he kept having to come up with another reason. I know. why he landed there. And he tried really hard to like be... to be gracious and like take responsibility when he was like it's you know I should have said that I didn't create an environment where she could feel that way or act that way and like good good job Paul like you tried I liked him I like him I I thought it was really funny that it seemed like he was like basically on a different show like he like lost his luggage or something and didn't get the or didn't get the memo (laughs) on wardrobe and he he and Micah they seemed both really sad it seemed like this was a very painful experience for them the reunion maybe all of it but particularly the reunion Micah rubbed me the wrong way, to be completely honest with you. But maybe part of that was the treatment she got from Vanessa that 
like I was just like she didn't really have to apologize for anything. Wow. She I just felt like she just got like completely off the hook. And she did. even like the her and listen, I'd really like to know if it's Kwame or Kwame. Like every it seems like Kwame is like the correct pronunciation of it, but he continually says Kwame. Says Kwame. So yeah. it's kind of confusing. But like her and Micah and Kwame situation, Vanessa pretty much like just kind of questioned Kwame about it. And then like Micah just had to like lightly address it and it was done. Well, she really, really questioned Chelsea about it. She was like, Chelsea, how did this make you feel? Feel, and they, yeah. And they showed the bonus clip. Chelsea and, and Kwame, I like significantly more after seeing the reunion. Chelsea and Kwame and Zach, Zach. and Bliss. I didn't dislike Bliss ever. If anything, I was just like, I don't really get it. Why are you with this guy? But after watching the reunion, I'm like, did we not see everything? Because Zach and Bliss seem very much in love. And yeah. their weirdness just seems to work together. And I really, really like it. And Chelsea and Kwame also seem way better than we ever saw on the show. Amazing apartment. Just a beautiful home. Yeah. Lovely views. I googled how much speech pathologists make after seeing uh-huh. the apartment because I was super confused based on what we yeah, saw previously. I think her family might have some money. Yeah. Because of the beautiful home on obviously water on the lake. Views, yeah, and the Puget yeah. Sounds and Lake Washington <laughs> yeah. are like important to her. So, you know, go for it, girl. I mean, speech pathologists also do decently, but the up the come up that Kwame had from his apartment in Portland. Probably yeah. made it a lot easier to move to Seattle. <laughs> I would say so. It was... They seemed really happy. I, I have to say, I thought that a lot of their answers were really sweet. And I know I'm jumping all over the place, but when Chelsea was being questioned about Micah and Kwame's conversation, I was just like, why is Micah not being asked to speak here? Like, all she was doing was being asked to apologize. I just thought it, I just thought it was very weird. And like, I, I will say Vanessa, in some ways, like asked more direct questions than I was expecting. And I and I keep saying Vanessa because Nick was like a complete non-factor. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. What was his purpose? Yeah. It was like, a, it, was a, it was a no-show. But she seemed very focused on like answering the internet's biggest questions versus anyone working with her to ask questions that were like relevant to the relationships. But even the inter- some of the internet's questions, like, I, like there was just no interrogation of Jackie at all. Like, there was no... Why do you think they didn't go? I mean, because I'm sure Jackie expected it to be rough. It was really, really weird. It was the complete opposite. It was a fucking cakewalk for Jackie. She basically just had tea with Vanessa, and they just, like, kiki Randall time. (laughs) The emphasis on, like, whether or not she cheated on Marshall is also, like, totally relevant to me. Like, the way that she treated Marshall, like, the total... the In totality, is, is worse. But... One thing I also didn't understand was like the text messages that were leaked that were going around. Like, never got anything on that. Yeah. Like, shouldn't they have brought that up? They only asked Marshall about what Jackie said. Yeah. He used an anti trans slur and they asked him <laughs> about the text messages, but they never asked her about like implying that he, <laughs> that like, I don't know, that he's gay. Like, it just was really weird. Why are you laughing? <laughs> That was probably one of the only moments of the reunion where I laughed when they asked him if he said it. And then he basically was like, well, you know, so I did ask, I did say like, who knows if you're a girl or not. (laughs) And then he was like, but I never used that term. But I was just like, what? It's just really weird. What? What? What what funny jokes were you guys throwing back and forth to each other where that was appropriate joke? Also, I had no idea what they were talking about. Like, it was just, it was super, super strange. And what the word is that he used? I didn't know what the word was. I didn't even know they were, like, I didn't know this came up. All I knew was that she implied that she thought he was gay in the text messages that were leaked. <laughs> That's all I knew about. Did you know about this slur, alleged slur? Yes, I did know about the alleged slur. But because she wrote on her Instagram, I guess, which like Jackie was using her Instagram illegally for sure. I mean, against what production (laughs) tells you to do. I don't know if illegal is the word, but you know what I mean. Um, But yeah, she was just like, oh, get ready at the reunion because 
we broke up because of the slur, da da da, whatever. And she kind of backtracked a lot with Vanessa um, based on what she was saying on, on the internet. But it seems like they were just like joking around. And then she kind of used whatever, I mean, whatever this, what he said to just like leave, which I'm sure she was going to leave. And he anyways. said that she had a strong jawline. So he didn't know if she had previously. <laughs> so he was joking that she could have previously been a man, which it's just a, I, you know, it's so crazy. It's just, a, just, it's just a weird, it's just a weird thing to say. And I just want to say, like, also, you know, if she had, if she, if she was trans, like, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, it's just such an absurd thing to say. I don't know. And I just want to make it clear we we support trans rights and trans people. Oh, one hundred percent. I was, I'm laughing because when he was like, describing this, I was just like, what? Like the it's whole just really thing weird. just seemed so strange. Um, but then I'm thinking like maybe she was joking about him being gay and that's why he came back with that. But the whole thing is... is They're just mean to each other. Beyond weird. But no, but from what we've seen, Marshall hasn't been mean to anyone. He seems incapable of being mean. I don't agree. I thought he seemed like he was pretty like rude and, uh, at the reunion. To who? Just to Jackie. I mean, she was rude to him too, but I didn't think he was like taking the higher ground. At the reunion? What did he even say? Yeah. I just feel like the way that he was like being trying, he was like defending himself was just weird. I understand he was put in that position, but I didn't think he came across particularly well. I thought he was fine. Also on the show, I literally think she wanted him to just be like, shut the fuck up to her. Like it seemed like that's what she was craving. She was craving a few shut the fuck ups and he couldn't that's do true. it. So I don't think he's like inherently mean. It doesn't seem like that. If he was, she might be into him. I agree. He's not inherently mean. For, I definitely agree. And J- Justin from Bachelor Nation was there to support him, by the way. They're really, I guess they're like close. Yeah, I love Justin. So we love the Glaze fam, I guess. I had no issue with Marshall. I had an issue with Vanessa's questioning of Marshall. Like it that was weird. was weird. And then her being like, I don't know how I would feel. I don't fucking care. I don't care how you would feel, Vanessa. I don't care. I know. She, they just brought it back to like Nick and Vanessa as like the, the wise married couple. And I'm just like, I don't know anything about your marriage. I don't need to. I don't deserve to. But like, why are you guys in this position? Is it because you're like marriage experts? If so, I, I need more know. proof. But like most hosts don't like just keep making it about themselves. Like we're here to know about Jackie and Marshall. And you gave us barely any extra information. Yeah. Matter of fact, you confused people like Juliet, who wasn't completely <laughs> dialed in on everything happening on TikTok and, and I'm Instagram. Pretty, I'm pretty dialed in. I know a lot. Right. And I so spent, I would say that a lot of people watching it were probably like, huh? I spent a lot of time on Love is Blind Reddit on Sunday preparing for the finale. I was like, I got to catch up with all of the internet scoop. And one thing we didn't touch on with Paul and Micah was the conspiracy theory that he like... Ha- had some secret affair with Micah's bridesmaid because he touched her butt when he was walking out of the room after they broke up. I love conspiracy theories, so I was like, huh. But I, Paul's just not that kind of guy. I mean, Paul completely shut it down. and was just like, this is absurd. I don't even know. Yeah. I was scooching by. It is a little weird. It's a little weird. And the girl did smile. I mean, he definitely slapped her butt. It was like a... I, like I a don't cat. know if it was a... Yeah, I don't know if it was a slap like I'm trying to slap your butt. But his scooch was a, definitely a tap. It was a little tap. It reminded me of how like athletes will kind of like tap each other though sometimes. And they're trying to like get past each other on the court or on the field. Or... Yeah. It was kind of I mean, like yeah, that. I've but done, she... it, done it before, but... She had a big smile. I think if she hadn't reacted... Also, there was... There was... It seemed like there was room. I don't know. There's a lot of people in there. I wish Shelby had been at the re- reunion. I would have preferred Shelby to Irina. Shelby? Shelby, I, I think... Who would you trust more around your husband? To be completely honest... Yeah. Both of them could be butt naked around my husband because <laughs> ugh, not for me. <laughs> Cause I just think that Shelby, I think she's more diabolical. I think Irina is meaner and more insecure, but I don't think she's got like a plan. Whereas Shelby was like at the wedding, she's like, This is what I wanted to happen when Micah is heartbroken. She's like, This is how I was hoping it would go. That's what she said. Yeah. Irina or Shelby? I also like didn't need to hear from Irina at all. Like she didn't say any. She didn't contribute at all to the. Family. I also don't think Shelby would apologize. So I'm gonna go with Irina because Shelby seems yeah. to be mean and is like, I didn't do anything wrong. Told you so, bitch. She's like, yeah. <laughs> Told you this wasn't it. Irina was mean and was just like, oh fuck, did I really come off that way? Oh my god, I'm the bitch. Shelby's like, I didn't do shit wrong. You guys are some pussies. 
That's yeah, what, Shel- those are, those yeah. are two different energies. Basically. And, <laughs> and Micah is like, yeah, Shelby loves me. She just wants the best for me. So those two are toxic together. I think Micah similarly like wasn't sure she wanted like this nice guy. I don't know. I think I'm very pro Paul. I was texting with a friend earlier today and she was like, I think you should try to date Paul. And since she said that, I'm like, huh, do I love Paul? (laughs) No, because you hate his TikTok. And his Instagram cooking. Oh my God. His cooking you Instagram couldn't, you is You couldn't support unbearable. him in that venture. <laughs> his cooking so Paul's is not going to work for you. Oh my God. I, I just think he seems like a nice guy, but I, I don't know. I, I have like just sort of like no interest in Micah. I never understood anyone's interest in Micah. So I'm not against her. Oh, but. I am slightly against her because I think she was rude. I think she was rude. I think Irina was rude. I think Jackie was rude. It really sucks that the, that the women were bringing well, the tie down. Another question for my friend Georgia, who's the one who's like, you should date Paul. One male and one female from this cast, who would you date? The female's obvious. I think the male's obvious too. It's Brett and Tiffany. I pick Tiffany, but I pick Paul over Brett. No way. You're crazy. I think Brett, ha- I think Brett has some demons. I think he's got him under control and I think he seems like an awesome partner, but he works out too much for me. So I pick Paul. I will say that a red flag for me for Brett, it's pretty big red flag for this is bad, but for this, like for being a whatever he does with sneakers and being around the sneaker industry, his shoes were horrific. <laughs> and the fact that you had to tell us that that suit was custom, I'm like, oh, buddy, we know they don't make that in bulk. No one's buying that. <laughs> There's not enough Flavor Flaves in the world to buy that suit. I thought his hair looked really good. Very fresh, fresh cut. He looked good. Those were my red flags. I think they seem really good together. I could just tell Brett's not for me. I will say, I didn't like that. I mean, I guess I should have knew that this was going to happen, but we literally got nothing on Brett and Tiffany. Yeah. Because they're like happy and in a good place. They're like, eh, we don't really need to talk about you. We know next to nothing about Tiffany. Like, can you give me any Tiffany <laughs> facts? She moved to Portland. She has friends. She has friends. And I think I think we're done. I think that's all the facts we have. <laughs> <laughs> I like her a lot. She seems lovely and easy to be around. And the, honestly, I think he, they seem like really supportive of each other. I but mean, like, you picked her for who you would date. And all you know is that she <laughs> moved to Portland <laughs> and has friends. And you picked her for who you're dating. Well, who are you picking? I'm picking <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> I'm pick, you know, actually, I could also pick Bliss. I could pick Bliss. I like, she seems Bliss awesome. Bliss is good, too. Bliss does seem awesome. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements. So many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I have shocking news. Zach is my MVP of this reunion. He's the only one who like really came with more information. I love that he just aired out things that Irina told him. He defended his friend. 
And he was like, just being himself as per usual. I, thank you, Zach. I, By the way, after the reunion, I'm like, oh, okay. I can kind of see why Bliss likes him. Yeah. I can't Pre too. reunion, I was like, oh, what does she see? Well, Post reunion, I'm like, I get it. He didn't do any of the weird staring. Like he wasn't even, it wasn't even like, I mean, I think we saw more of his but... normal personality. Yeah. Yes, less probably less on the nervous. Show, I feel like he was, yeah, he was nervous. He was stressed out. He made a horrible decision. He realized it pretty quickly, pretty quickly that he made a bad decision. <laughs> Had to backtrack it. Then, like, was forced into like making a decision whether or not he wanted to marry Bliss. Like, that's all a lot in a short period of time. And I don't think we saw the best version of Zach uh, at the reunion. A year later, he's very happy with his wife. He's confident. He's got friends on the show no pressure, and he thrived. Yeah, I, I I really liked him. Also, I was thinking about it. Did you read Did you read the receipts thing that he posted on Instagram? I didn't. It took me back to disliking him. It was well-intentioned. It was about, like, showing grace and um, how, like, a lot of the struggles that his mom went through and that he went, went through as her son. He's been through a lot. I didn't love the Instagram posts, but that's just because I, I, I would, it's not my style. That said, she clearly has a very big family. She has a lot of siblings and half siblings. Who? She's Bliss. Sorry. Oh, okay. Bliss's dad and Zach are now buds. Like, I'm happy for him that he's married into a big family. I feel like he really needed that. Like, I think he's mm-hmm. like longed for it. So that also seems really nice and like kind of uncomplicated. I, I like seeing happy couples. I will say that. Like, it's definitely better than like seeing the misery that Micah and, and Paul were in. But yeah, maybe that's like, Kwame and Chelsea genuinely seem happy. Yeah. Even like talking about meeting his mom and being around her family. And I, Kwame, who came across also really bad on the show, Mm -hmm. he came across great. He had the right answers. He took accountability. He apologized to her and her family and everyone watching for like, he's like, I totally understand why you wouldn't believe in us after this. Like everything he said, I was like, this is great. Great job. He seemed really happy and like relaxed. It is interesting. I, I I felt like another thing that I got from the reunion was how well the show is made, like to the detriment of the people on it, but to like the benefit of viewers for what you want to see. Because it's clear that, you know, it was very manipulated to give us specific storylines, which I yeah. enjoyed. And that's, I think, kind of what people know they're signing up for. I'm not saying like it's it's totally ethical, but it's not surprising. But the the... The reunion was so disjointed and also just like, frankly, wasn't like directed that well. Like, and it was sort of like took them, it seems like a while to like find their groove. Yeah. It just reminded me how well made those first 12 episodes are. The actual and show is. The actual show. Yeah. And, you know, would I advise someone I know to be on Love is Blind? <laughs> Absolutely not. Not just because of the way it's manipulated, obviously. I was like, damn, this company is good at making TV. They should stick to that and not do this live bullshit. Oh, for sure. I also agree with you. I thought to myself, I'm like, oh, they told us what they wanted us to see. Yeah. Like they made these stories and it seems like we missed a lot of the other stuff that was happening. One thing that was that was not redeemed for me though, Chelsea's story about shopping for the Calvin Klein underwear with her mom just made the photo shoot even worse. I was just like, no, Agreed. not okay. No, it doesn't None explain anything. None of it anything. made sense. I will, but to your point about what you just said, Kwame saying that that's the photo shoot where he knew she was the one. I was like, really? I thought you hated her guts. <laughs> At that I moment, know. I knew for sure you were saying no. So it is interesting yeah. how they shot it versus what was really going on. Because what I saw that that photo shoot was the worst time in Kwame's life. And like, who knows if that's true? Also, the other thing that's really interesting yeah. is when we saw Micah, we saw an extra clip of Micah and um, Chelsea. I was just like, show us more of them interacting. We like that. We all like that. Like, I don't understand why they don't. We I, we know that those townhouses are all near each other. So like, just show more of it. Yeah. It's fun. I'm, I'm fine with them showing us stuff we haven't seen. I hate the highlight reels. And they do this at every reunion. Yeah. But we I, I'm always like, why we're here. I, I watched it. I just binged yeah. it two days ago. I was sitting in front of my couch and I watched 10 hours of Love is Blind. I know what the <laughs> fuck happened. <laughs> The only reason we're here is because we just watched it. So, By the way, I wanted good. to be like, anyone that sat on hold for 40 minutes on Sunday, we know <laughs> what we watched. We yeah, were ready we're to good. sit on hold for an hour. If you're willing to do that, we watch the show. Do you believe Zach, I guess is the person, or whoever told him, or Irina, whatever, 
Do you think Micah was ever going to say yes to Paul? There's a lot of rumors out there about Micah. Like, a lot. A lot. I've seen them myself. I'm sure you read them on Reddit. Yeah. Just, like, a lot of rumors about Micah's intentions, who she was dating, things like that. Who she's dating now. Who she's dating now. I I don't really know what to believe. She looked so unhappy at the reunion that I'm kind of like, I, I don't even know it's real. I don't totally believe a lot of them. But I don't know. Like, I'm just like, am I a sucker? I, she, I think that she was not going to say yes because she knew that Paul was not going to say yes. So I don't think that was ever going to happen. I don't happen. think she was ever going to say yes. And really? I believe Zach and Irina because I think Irina is not a nice person. But yeah. I don't think she's a liar. Yeah. Like, I think that she told him what was being told to her. And that is something that she would do because she seems like she's a shitty friend or was a shitty friend to Micah. So, yeah, I think she told the truth and that Micah was never going to get married to him. And I think that the way that Micah was portrayed... Mike has probably had a little rough go on social media. And yeah. so she's going to play up the victim card as much as she can in this instance. That's yeah, you're, you're probably right. I, I don't know. Also, I think it's interesting. Like he went to Arizona. By the way, I just I wish they had explained the Arizona thing. Like, Mike, if you're listening, yeah. please let us know. <laughs> I would love to know. The other thing was, what the fuck else did Irina do to, to Zach? Seems like know. a lot was left out. And it was pretty bad. The stuff that she was apologizing for, like putting the pillow over her face, like I don't think that's apology necessary. I don't think that warrants an apology. Like it's uncomfortable. But yeah, like what did she do that we didn't see? I mean, it just seems like everyone was on the same page. And even Irina was like, okay, I, I, I know, I know. Like she wanted him to stop talking. Yeah. Like when he was like, there's a lot that was not shown. And way worse things that were said to me and done to me. I'm like, what else, Zach? Tell us. She must like, have just like Vanessa. Him. That would have been a good follow up. Yeah, <laughs> Zach, can you please <laughs> expound what else happened? What didn't we see in Mexico? <laughs> please tell us what torture were you put through? <laughs> <laughs> I know, and like everyone else agreed. Also, the other thing that I wish that we had learned about seeing the three couples vacation together. I assume it's because they can't like really tell anyone else they're together. Like, what's that like? Like, what have they what have they been doing for the last year? Like, how like if they moved in together, like how do they keep that a secret? Like, what are the logistics afterwards? Like, I there's so much more that I would have wanted to know, especially about like to your point, Brett and Tiffany. Like, okay, so Tiffany moved. Do you guys never have to show that on the on the show? What did that entail? Was it hard? Like, that's one of the reasons I like Brett so much. He was like, she's had to make a much more of an adjustment than me. Like, I thought that was really sweet and understanding. But yeah, I just like wanted to know more about the last year. Yeah, that would have been nice. I would have rather had that than like 20 minute Q&A on who's having babies. The only reason I was glad Irina was there is I feel like he probably would have done it anyway, but I feel like it made Zach more comfortable to like say things he had heard for whatever reason because she's like part of the circle. I didn't need her. Like I just didn't think she added anything. And I guess just because like I don't really know what having her like take accountability for her sins does. Nothing. I like yeah. what Bliss said, though. Bliss was like, you're making excuses, and I hope you take this opportunity to apologize and become a better person. Bliss seems like she's really solid and has like a great like moral compass. Yeah, for sure. Also, I think her and Zach, I like the way that they handled it all. Me too. Like, even Bliss being like, I don't really want to talk about this anymore. Like, this is like the smallest thing in our relationship. Like, can we move on? And also her, I liked how she pointed out, she was like, he told me everything, every little detail. Like detail, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, this sounds like a good relationship, honestly. I, I yeah, hope it works it out. Yeah, I did. They seemed really strong. Also, another question that I feel like was completely missed. Like, Bliss, how did you get over that? I know. Yeah, I know. Or do you guys still talk about it? Like He proposed to somebody else. Like, how were you able to get over that? It's a great question. He didn't choose you first. You guys seem really solid and strong now, and that's awesome. What made you feel like, you know what? He fucked up, and I still think he's the guy for me, so I'm going to give him another chance. Like, yeah. what? how did you come to that conclusion? It seems like you were right, but how did you get there? It's a great question, Callie. Maybe we should try to get these people on the podcast. Talk to them about it. I like, would love it. I do think... I guess they're probably doing it after the altar, so we'll see some of it, but still. Yeah, yeah. Um, wait, another laughable moment. It's funny enough, both, both times I laughed involved Marshall. When Jackie said she had PTSD when she heard Josh's voice. PTSD? <laughs> Marshall's face was like, what? PTSD? What? I'm like, I don't know if she knows what that means. I don't think she does. 
Because <laughs> if she did, she wouldn't be dating him and living together. Not a good sign, Jackie, if you get PTSD when you hear his voice. The fact that they're like living together and they have been for a while is pretty is pretty crazy. And have a dog. And Which have a dog. Vanessa was like, do you feel differently now that you see that? And it's like, no, she was still a bitch. Do I think she ended up with the right person? Or Probably. I don't know if her. I don't know if her and Josh are going to like last or whatever. But like, yes, her and Marshall were not supposed to be together. Josh is a much better fit. That doesn't mean she wasn't a bitch. Right. Doesn't like let her off the hook. Vanessa just, I guess, these networks get invested in the happy endings or litigating like what went wrong instead of just like asking questions. I will say, Amelia and I talked about this yesterday. I'm not like an advocate for like Andy Cohen needs to do every reunion, but what he does do well is be unbiased. Like he kind of just goes after everyone and makes everyone uncomfortable, even if he still plays favorites in his subtle way. Like he's much better at like spreading around the discomfort. And that's really what we were missing. I think the other thing with Andy is I I agree with you. Um, I'm not not an advocate of him doing every reunion. (laughs) If he's going to keep delivering the way he has, then go ahead. Be the, be the guy, be the The reunion reunion. Well, let's assess after that. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, that would be a great assessment, but I agree with you. I do think he has favorites that he hides as best as he can, but you can still kind of tell. Yeah. But for me personally, I usually agree with his favorites, so I'm okay with it. And I also am always interested at who he doesn't like because yeah. I'm like, oh, they must not be great. Like, he what clearly do doesn't do? like Melissa. And I'm right. like, huh, she can't be as great as she seems. Right. Doesn't like Melissa. Like, got really mad at Robin like everyone else. Like, yeah. yeah. In the, the same way that he... It seems like his favorites are usually fair. Like, right. I get why you don't. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he didn't love Ramona. He still had Ramona on the show. He still, like, it was, you know, he was fine. But he would, you know, dig a little deeper with her or be like, come on, that doesn't make sense. Or whatever it is. Right. And most of the time, I think the fans align with whatever his his feelings are that he's trying to hide. So it, it comes across well as a, as a host. He doesn't outright say, well, I don't like that. And for me personally, I think this. And that was what we were getting... From Vanessa. Wasn't good. Just wasn't good. And did you see who's hosting the ultimatum the next season? Oh, God, no. Who? It's just really random. It's Joanna Garcia Swisher. Do you know who that is? is. No. She's on Sweet Magnolias, and um, that does which is for me. a Netflix show, and she's married to a former Yankee. That's basically why I know who she is, Nick Swisher. It's just really random. I'm just like, I mean, I understand the Netflix connection, but like, I don't know why they picked her. Like, I, I have no I problem like with her. She could but I'm just easily like, this have been on Desperate Housewives. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. And Sweet Magnolias is like, I think, pretty popular on Netflix with like a certain demo. I mean, I watch it, so. Um, it's just random and weird. You know what? What, Callie? One good thing about Love is Blind. There's many good things about it. This I reunion mean, was a fit. This reunion yeah, was yeah, a fail. Yeah. But it's, it's an entertaining show. Here's my advice. Okay. Only one piece of advice. Two pieces of advice. I'm sorry, I can't leave out the second. First piece of advice is no more Vanessa. You got to get new hosts. If it's not Andy Cohen, Whoever the host is needs to go to the Andy Cohen School of Reunion. <laughs> and hey, we're available. Me and Callie. <laughs> I am available and I promise you I'd do it for cheaper than Vanessa the first time. And then when Same. we do so well, then I'd ask for more money. <laughs> but the first one, I'm willing to take a lower number so you can see what a reunion is supposed to look like. Right? <laughs> Second piece of advice, Netflix. Never again. No more Never live again. events. No more. No, no more, more live events. Nobody wants You kill the binge market. Why are we trying to do something different? You don't switch something. You don't switch it up when it's working. I think they should have done it on a Friday night, by the way. Sunday night is just not ideal. Like, there was a lot going on. Playoffs, succession, other Honestly, shows. W- way too much going on. Who picked this date? I, I don't know. It would have been Friday's their day. So, like, if you want to do a live... Like, listen, we millennial women, a lot of us are home on Friday night. We would have watched. 100%. <laughs> also, on Fridays, like, there's no, no shows come on on Fridays. Like, Fridays is such a good day. That's why to you own, that's why Netflix owns it. Yeah, you get home and you're like, cool, it's new on Netflix. Um, here's, my, here's my suggestion. I was thinking about this. I was excited to tell it to you. My piece of advice is for the couples that don't make it or for the couples who have hit a rough patch, send them back to the pods. Make them confront each other in the pods and see what happens. And like, let's have Micah and Paul hash it out and let's record it 
through the wall. Are you talking about on the show or after the show? After the show, but tape it. Like, let's see them. Like, it's almost like punishment. If you don't get married. I don't know if it works as well because they've seen each other. I know, but they all talk about like, well, when we were in the pods, it was like this. Obviously, it'd be different. But I just feel like they need to have... I just want them to confront each other in a way that does not involve a mediator. Or if it's a mediator, it should be us because we'd, we'd do a better job. <laughs> I'm willing to give that a shot. I'm not sure if I mean, it'll work. I don't know if I believe in it, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Anything is better than what we just watched. Paul and Micah didn't speak to each other. So I'm just like, how, we need them to interact more. Netflix, you can't keep us waiting for 36 hours and then give us that. That's the other thing. <laughs> well, I think when the live stream didn't work, I'm sure a lot of things went haywire. So, and listen, to the Netflix employees who did who were just were doing their jobs trying to execute this terrible idea, it's not on you. It's not your fault. It's we, not their we, fault. We support you and we hope you're hanging in there. It's probably been a stressful week. Well, any final thoughts, Callie? Yeah, not about Love is Blind, but I would just like to know what else have you watched since Bachelor's off? What else are you filling your time up with? It's a great question. Basketball. A lot of basketball. Yeah, of course. A lot of basketball. Called The Midwife, one of my favorite television programs. I've never heard of it. What's it on? British PBS. Oh, uh, gotcha. Um, what else have I been watching? I don't even know. Oh, Top Chef is my favorite show right now. I fucking love Top Chef. Oh, yeah. I'm behind one on Top Chef. I need to catch up on that. Below Deck Sailing Yacht is back. So that's I couldn't watch anything with food on it last week. Mm, So Right. You were sick. I missed it. Oh, I'm catching up on Girls Trip. Ultimate Girls Trip. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vanderpump, duh. You know, I'm feeling my time. Um, I did not know that Below Deck was back this week. So that's good to know. Oh, my God. It's great. Wait, it's only been one episode, Still, right? Yeah. Well, there was one okay. there was one last night I haven't watched yet. Okay. You're watching Survivor, right? Yeah, I think this season's really bad. It's not the best. It's way too obsessed with itself. Like, I don't want any more sob stories about how happy these people are to be on Survivor. I just they they're doing way too many tricks. Yeah. Just give me a regular show. Yeah, I need the regular I need the regular Survivor back. But I am watching Survivor every episode. I love it. Yeah. Um Oh my gosh, Jury Duty on Amazon Prime. I'm going to watch that. I heard it's awesome. I have cried laughing. I'm going to watch and it. I'm really excited. I wasn't sure if it was like my humor and other people wouldn't think it's funny. So I didn't like tell anyone that I was watching it. And then one of my friends texted me and was like, Oh my God, have you seen this show? And I was like, Okay, I'm yeah, really excited. Me. And I let, told my little brother to watch it. And he called me the next day and was like, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, me and Lashay are in the bed laughing. Highly recommend that on Amazon Prime if you like The Office. It's like that kind of humor. I can't wait. I heard it's really good. I watched Night Agent on Netflix. Watched part of that. It was fine. I watched Beef on Netflix. I watched Beef as well. Very good. I watched... Oh, I watched the bombing, the Boston bombing doc on Netflix. Didn't watch that. I somehow like wasn't paying attention to the news in 2013. It was all new information for me. Okay. That's really weird. I didn't remember a lot of it. So it was super interesting to me. And I kept asking my mom, like, do you remember this? Do you remember this? And she was like, Callie, it was 10 years ago. Yeah, I remember. It wasn't like (laughs) from 1950. Also, you had had recent ties to Boston at that point. No, my dad literally lived there when it happened. And the bomb went off on the street he lived on. Oh my God. So maybe I like blacked it out. I don't know. It was right for the playoffs. So he had to have been there. I have no idea how I don't remember this. Me neither. That's crazy. Glad your dad's okay. Very, very interesting. Yellow Jackets? I got to catch up on that. And I got to catch up. I started watching episode one, but you really have to be mentally prepared to watch that show. I know. That's like, that. that's less depressing to me, but I got, I'm going to dial in. I'm excited about that. It's still a lot. It's a lot to watch. And then we're going to offline and we'll come back to this next week. We got to start Love Island Series 3. Yes, we will. I'm super, super excited. Oh, also, I started watching the Brooke Shields documentary, which is interesting. Hmm. On Hulu. Okay. That sounds great. Lot of TV time over here. Seriously. I'm I'm really excited about Jury Duty and Yellow Jackets. So, going to dig in. All right, everybody. I will be back, I believe, on Thursday with Gabby from The Bachelorette. Liked Gabby. Yeah, she was cool. You'll hear that combo. And so much more to come. Thank you so much to Ashley Smith. Thank you all for bearing with us through our Netflix delayed recap. And um, congrats to the happy couples. Legitimately. I mean it. Happy for you all. Can't wait to see after the final. After the altar. 
Oh, keep fuck. your... All good. <laughs> too many shows. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>